Can you guys hear me on the live chat? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me on the live chat? kids come up and sort of take some stop motion pictures with the setup here. And what we need to have is the overlay for what's going on with the particles. And so let's go ahead and just use a still for now. Sort of get the setting right. So I'm gonna send these to myself. You guys grab your camera and take a couple pictures there. So, the, so we can just use that as the background clean plate. Uh, you guys on the live chat here, I'll throw up the picture uh, on Slack. So let me do that. You guys have cameras on your phones? All right, go for it. Did it finish? Uh, yes, it did. I'm, I just already started it, so I'm to try this again.
So you want to get those files into After Effects. Corey, are you re-encoding? Re uh, I just did. Still having the same issue. And so they're using this stop motion Grogu background at the Phoenix Film Festival. If anybody wants to help volunteer at the Film Festival on this coming Saturday, is that when it is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you should contact Stephanie Lucas uh, so that um, you can help. This is part of the things uh, we always have a booth usually at Kids Day at the Phoenix Film Festival. So it's something that kids can do. And so this year, there's always some sort of stop motion animation thing. And so we have this background. And then there's different, um, you know, Mandalorian and Grogu toys the kids are going to move around in addition to the particle effect that we're going to have there. And again, this is the based on the scene from the Mandalorian where Baby Yoda is on this thing that um, he's communing with the force. And so we need to create an overlay here for that part.
Jordan, can you log in? Is there a problem?
Here should be fine. I could just use my laptop now because now I know how to switch back and forth on the on the licenses. So. Yeah, I mean, is your is your lap? I mean, it's just it's something with this plug-in and the cards. It's not the whole computer overall. Um, just this one situation. All right, everybody can hear me fine on the live stream. Great. All right, so you guys tell me. We need to, uh, we want to create this overlay here that's going to go over the top of this thing with the particle effect on it, right? And we sort of went through part of this last time. But let's go ahead and create a new comp that's going to have roughly the overlay settings that we want. So I'm going to go to composition, new composition. I'm going to make sure this box is unchecked. And let's make it tall, so maybe 2,000 pixels tall and maybe 500 pixels wide. Other way around, 500, 2,000. So it's nice and tall. And we'll make it 10 seconds. And we'll call this one blue energy. Ah, wrong way. <coughs> Thank you. 2,000. There we go. 
That's about what we want. That seems a little bit too tall. Maybe a thousand. Twelve hundred. There we go. That looks about right. Cool. And so uh, we need to use some particles here. And what is the Red Giant particle plugin called? Feel free to reference notes from last time. All the particles, remember when we made the um, candle wick and the particles, what was that plugin? If you had to find the name from scratch, what would you Google? Mm -hmm. If you had to find the name of the red giant particle effect from scratch, how would you search? What's it called? Particular. Particular. I would write it down this time. Right? All the, just, uh, this is all pedantic, but you need to know it in order to be able to find any information, right? And so we're using After Effects. Everyone's got a handle on that, right? But the all of the VFX stuff we've been using for the last few weeks, that's all made by what, what, how did you get your license for that? How did you, what company do, do you apply for a license from? Maxon. Maxon, Maxon um, makes Cinema 4D, and they bought the plugin company called Red Giant, right? And so this is a Red Giant effect called Particular. Um, and so how do I get going with this effect? How do I see some particles? When, we've used the, when we use the particle effects in the past, what kind of layer do we put them on? What are some options for types of layers? Null, solid. Okay, a null and a solid, right? So which one of those would we put it on? A null, right? Or maybe a solid. The solid, yeah. Solid's going to be something that takes up an entire, the entire comp, right? So new solid. We'll call this um, parts or blue energy. There we go. And then I can double click particular with this selected to put it on there. There we go. And if we remember correctly, the uh, red, um, a lot of the red giant effects are more intense. And so they have their own designer window, right? And so let's save, first of all, and then uh, click on the designer. Everyone on the live stream following along? I'm on the laptop uh, right now, so I can't monitor the live stream as closely as I usually would. I don't have it open on a separate window. So 
Corey, I'm going to make you the live stream monitor. Can you go to the YouTube channel and pull it up there? In case anyone says anything, can you yell it out? Uh, okay. So if you go to my YouTube channel, you can just watch the live stream or at least be able to see the chat over there. Cool. All right, we've got some particles here, right? And so now... Jordan, what's one thing we need to change about what we have here? Remember, we're trying to make something that looks like that Grogu. We want to make them go up. And right now, but as we go through here, we sort of want to make cho choices building this step by step, right? And so the emitter type, we got a point. Let's go with box. All right, and so we've got this box here now that's emitting them. We can move it. We've got to move it down to the bottom. That's better. You see that X, Y, Z are linked in the box. Let's go X, Y, Z individual. So that allows us to crush the Y down to make this more of a cool. Oh my gosh, Red Giant. Crash already? Everybody saving? Cool. So box XYZ individual. I'm going to make the Y maybe 5. That's better. And the X, Y position, maybe 0. Or maybe 1,200.
Because right now it's showing this. Okay. You can make your particles a little bit bigger so that you can see them. Okay. And like I said, this, if you were to save right now, I don't think this is being saved. And so uh, at every step of the way here, I'm going to click apply and then reopen it so that at least my changes are being saved here. Now that this one seems kind of fragile, especially when I'm live streaming at the same time. Cool. All right. So now let's come over here to motion. And so in this case, we want them to go up, right? Um, so if I take the velocity, I go to zero. There you can sort of see what's happening, right? So I'm in motion, velocity to zero. Now you can see them being born, uh, but they don't go anywhere. Um, if we look over here, our velocity over the life, Let's say directional. And so my X rotation there, I put a 90 under motion. In motion, I have directional here. If we wanted to move further up the screen, if I dial up the velocity here, I start moving further up the screen. The random velocity is sort of giving me more variety as they change. I want to make sure I don't lose this, so I'm going to click Apply. Come back here. If I hit space bar, I should see kind of the same thing. That's good. I'm going to control S and come back to the designer. Do your settings over here under emitter type look the same? Because if those aren't the same, then it won't be going in the first direction. So under, that's motion. But check this to make sure that yours
What do we do? Twelve hundred up down, five hundred across. So if you want to go further up. Cool, let's go to the next one over here, particle type. So we got our simple sphere here in our lifetime. Looks a little too thin there at the end, so I'm going to change my lifetime maybe, let's do a five. That helps. And like I said before, everything here helps to create more variety in the values, right? So life random, I'm going to say 50%. So Corey, right here, size rotation, this is where you can increase the size to just sort of get a better, so you can see them a little bit better if the screen's a little too small. And then here under blend mode. Say where's size? Right here, it says size rotation. So if you click on that, then you can adjust the, the size. And so when we're doing hot things or energy things, what was the one piece of secret sauce I told you guys about before? Hot. Energy What was the blend mode that's gonna give you that kind of look? Feel free to reference your notes. Yes. Add. If you don't have that in your notes, write it down. Consider maybe getting a tattoo. I'll let you choose where. I would think right across your chest. Would be the, would the, right the, next to the heart. Yeah, way to go. So let's go ahead and change this to add. We're not going to get too much of a change yet because we got to change the color. So let's come into the color here. And let's try this electric.
And in order for it to get more adding, we need to have it actually overlap. And so let's bring the size up a bunch. And do some work with this. energy here. The GDP is going out. Am I bumping the thing down here? It might be because I'm, I'm plugged into the laptop feed. It might be kind of wonky. So you can see it here. When I have normal blend mode, there, there it is under normal blend mode. Look at the particles as they're adding up here. And let me give them a whole bunch more. So I'll go back to emitter and particles per second. I'll turn it up to like 300. There we go. Now if I come back to particle type under blend mode, that's normal blend mode. I'm going to switch to add. Watch what happens. See how a lot more of it becomes white? Normal, add. I feel like they live too long now. Let's say four seconds. That's better. Now we're starting to see things overlap a little bit. And so under color here, I don't know, we have a bunch of options. You can sort of see how these give us some different looks. I think we want just a kind of a standard I like that. And that can be a starting point once you close off this window in here. All right, so at the end of their lives, these, so this node editor here, you know, this is just a gradient. You can get rid of nodes by just tearing them off. If you click, you can make a new node. Okay. And let's see how that looks. Let me get rid of this one. That's working pretty good. So I just have a light blue, a dark blue in the middle, and then a light blue at the end. Sort of gives me this kind of, this kind of look. And then the thing that also is going to make this a little more, here's 100% opacity. If you dial that down a little bit, Things will start to blend together a little bit more. I'm going to turn up the size randomness just to start getting some more. There we go. That gives me more tiny particles. So under size, size randomness, 
I'm gonna move that way up. There we go. I'm liking that way more now. Right now I get tiny ones and larger ones. And under opacity, let's say fade in, fade out. This bell curve right here. And again, mine is 10 seconds long here. And so what we need to do is we need to create a movie, that, a movie file that we can hand off so that they can easily use this as a layer in Premiere. And so at the gig, they're not going to be running particular. We're going to render this out into a movie for them um, so that they can just overlay it as a layer in, um, in Premiere so that there's not not some sort of issue there. Um, cool, that's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to save this again, make sure I've got it going on by coming in here and coming in and saying apply. There we go.
And I can sort of just see what this would look like. If I bring my blue energy in here over top of this, I can sort of see how this is working. It's a little dense. We're going to need to lighten this up a little bit. I think we might want, just for the scale, maybe some more particles, but have them be smaller. And so let's come back in and make that change. And so we'll come back over here to particular. And so under particle size, Let's turn this down a bunch. See how we lose heat when we do that? When I'm turning down the size, it's because they overlap less, right? And so in order to compensate for that by making the particles smaller, I need to make more particles, right? So if I go back to the emitter, here's where I could bring this up maybe 1,500. Maybe it needs a little bit more, maybe 2,000. What does 3,000 look like? There we go. That's looking a little bit more like the effect that we're going for. It's still too thick, but we'll, it's better to have it be too thick now. And then the other effects that we'll add as we start putting it in there, we'll thin it out a little bit. Let's click apply. Cool, so now particular is a heavy lift, right? It's, the computer's making like 3,000 particles. We're doing a whole bunch here. And so we're gonna wanna do some more effects on top of this, but we want to get a little bit less going on with the, be able to free up some CPU energy. And so I'm gonna pre-render this, this comp. And so let's do that. I'm gonna go to blue energy. I'm gonna say composition, add to render queue. And we're going to render in an image sequence, right? So instead of going to composition, add to media encoder queue, I'm going to go to add to render queue. And in here, we can say that we just want a PNG sequence. There we go. However, which of these things do we want? Alpha is just the see-throughness. RGB plus alpha, right? Because we want the color and we want the see-throughness, right? And so we want the bottom one here. We, we want RGB, all of, we want the color plus all four channels. There we go. And under Grogu effect, I'm going to make a new folder. And it's going to make a whole image sequence here. And I'm going to say render. And so this will render this out. You can see it's rendering all the frames. 
we're making an image sequence, and so if we look in this folder, you'll see it's filling up with images, right? One PNG for every frame. Why are we doing it this way? This is essentially lossless, right? We're not losing any quality, and once this is rendered out, the computer won't have to do all these calculations on the particles. We'll be, we'll be able to just read the frames and put some other effects on top of it there. Not huge. Let's look. Well, it's way bigger than an MP4, right? But um, again, we're interested in freeing up CPU at the expense of using a little bit of disk space. So each of these is like a megabyte, 240 megabytes, less than that, but somewhere around there. 10 seconds. I rendered 10 seconds. And so now, in here, I'm not going to add the image, the, the pre-comp. I'm going to go composition, or sorry, file, import, file. And so when you import an image sequence, we haven't done a lot of this. I'm going to go to where this is. Watch what happens. This is important. So you, an image sequence, again, in your notes, it's literally just one frame for every, one picture for every frame. And so instead of a movie file, I have this folder filled with a bunch of images, right? Because I rendered a PNG sequence. If I click on one of them, you see that After Effects does a few things. One, it checks this box for me because it knows it's an image sequence. How does it know it's an image sequence? Because it looks for sequentially numbered files. This is a standard format. And we want it to be an import footage. And we can say import. And that brings it in. Over here, look at the, look at the icon. See how it looks like a stack of images? If you import an image sequence and you get 240 files over here, you did it wrong, right? you got to make sure that that box is checked. And most of the time, the box does get checked because it's sequentially numbered. However, what do we want to change over here? What frame rate do we usually work at? Yeah. And by default, it says 30. Because an image sequence, image sequence, there is no information about frame rate. because it's literally just a pile of pictures. The pictures don't know how fast they're supposed to be played back. And so you need to right click and say interpret footage and switch it to 24. And that makes sure that we're 24 frames per second. Let's make sure our composition is at 24 frames per second. It is. Cool, so now if I bring this down, we have it there. But if you look at the playback, it's kind of lickety split because it's pre rendered now. It, the computer doesn't have to work to make all those particles. It's just reading the pixels off of the off of the whole thing. All right, super useful technique coming up. We have this thing, and uh, we've got it doing this, which is good. 
However, it's not a loop, right? It sort of just goes again, and it's not really looping. So how can we make a loop out of something? What is a loop? A loop is essentially something where the first frame is the same as the last frame, right? And then if you play it back, it'll look like it's smoothly looping because by the time it gets to the end, the end is the beginning. So you can use, you can loop stuff by leveraging that concept. There's another shortcut here, Control Shift D. Watch what that does. I, I have my pre-rendered frames right here. Control Shift D splits the layer where the playhead is. Control Shift D. So see what happened there? It split it, and so now this frame is the same. And so if it were to start and end here, I would be I would be creating a seamless loop, right? If this point in the middle were both the beginning and the end, I'd have a seamless loop. And so I'm going to move this one back to the beginning. And I'm going to take this one and move it over here. I'm going to select this one and press uh, Alt and square bracket to sort of trim it. And bring this one over here. And so this point and this point again are the same. I kind of crunched it a little bit so that they overlap in the middle. And so now, if we just did a crossfade right here, remember this frame is the same as this frame. You can see when I click here, here, not quite clicking on the right frame, but you see it's close, here, here. And so here, if you watch it now, you can see it sort of blip from one to the other. And so if we did a crossfade right here, we could get this seamless loop. Let's crossfade the opacity. I'm going to hit T here and fade this one out and fade this one in. All right, so I'm going to go from 100 down to 0. And over here, I'm going to go from 0 on opacity up to 100. Move this one over a little bit more. There we go. So again, this frame and this frame are the same because I cut it from the middle. So let's go ahead and uh, pre-compose both these. I'm going to say pre-compose. We're going to call this uh, energy loop. Check it out. When it goes from the end to the beginning, we don't get any sort of glitch. We get a little bit of a fade point there in the middle, but depending on how we're fading, we could adjust that. So now I have something that'll loop seamlessly. You know, I could uh, do it a bunch of ways, but now, for instance,
Cool. I've got a seamless loop. So now let's talk about, remember the other thing that we did here was that we wanted to sort of smoosh some of these things together and blur them out. So this is that really great, remember the meta balls example where the two balls mush together? You guys remember how that worked? I'm gonna make two spheres. Here's one, here's another one. What did I do to make them fuzzy? If you wanna make anything fuzzy. If you wanna make the edge less sharp. What effect would make something less sharp? Blur. Yeah. I'm gonna make a new adjustment layer and add a blur. What's the regular blur called? Gaussian or Gaussian. And so if we turn that up, cool. And so now if I were to move one of these closer to the other, you can see we kind of get it, right? How they mush together. But remember this technique. Everyone have this written down. Blur and crunch. Blur and crunch. We did step one. We blurred. Step two is the crunch. Right? So blur. What effect is that? Gaussian blur. The crunch is to smush the alpha channel. Is it smush or smooth? Hmm. Smush. And this will be the levels effect. But remember, it's got to be only the alpha channel. Only the alpha channel. What's this technique called? Blur and crunch. Blur and crunch, right? This gives us that, it allows things to mush together. And so we did step one, we Gaussian blurred. What, what's the other effect we need? Levels. Levels. So let's just grab tiny windows. Here we go. Levels. What channel do we want to crunch? If it's not RGB, what other channel is there? RGB alpha. alpha. There we go. Alpha. So make sure I switch the levels to alpha. And so now, if I were to smush the output, see how I'm kind of undoing the fuzziness, right? By sort of smushing here, I can move it one way or the other. And so now, when I move things around, it's goo, right? Maybe that's another m mental label to put in there to remember. You can call it blur, blur and crunch, I think is a good name because that name is the technique. You blur and then you crunch the alpha channel. But it ends up looking like goo. Stuff sticks to each other. As they get closer, it sticks and then it comes together. If I wanted it to be gooier, I could come in here and make more with the blurriness, have it reach further. And so now when I get the goos, more quickly. Blur and crunch. Blur and crunch. And so now we're going to do that with our energy loop. I'm going to go ahead and uh, right click and put in a new adjustment layer and use the same things. 
So let's come in here with a Gaussian blur. Dial that up a bunch. And then come in with the levels, set it to alpha, and start smushing that. In this case, I think we need more just the bright stuff. We need to thin it out a little bit. I'm going to put in one more levels and put it at the very top. There we go, now we're getting kind of that spottiness that we're looking for. So I've got one level. Let's look at what these are doing step by step. This first level here, I'm just trying to make some of my heart, make this a little contrast here. And then we're blurring. We're seeing again a little bit of it there. And here we'll crunch. And so now we're getting that kind of pattern. That's pretty cool. It's a seamless loop here. We get that little bit of drop off in the middle. Can I change the opacity? Let's move this.
How about our loop dropping off here in the middle? I got this looking good. That was fine a second ago. Let's turn this back on. All right, so we've got these rising energy wisps things happening here with the part particles plus the blur and crunch, right? Let's go back and look at the reference. So there is this heat distortion happening, right? See how Yo uh, Grogu gets distorted here as the things in front of it? We're not, in this instance, because we're just compositing it in Premiere at the gig, we're just going for the energy here pretty much. But that effect of it moving up like this, I think we need it to be a little less, a little more sparse. A couple different things we could do. So let's come back here. It'd be cool if it wasn't so solid, right? If we had more of this stuff just along the edges. I'm going to make a new adjustment layer. And there's a bunch of uh, things that do this. But if I type in edge, there's a couple ones. We have find edges. And so if we were to grab that one, and put this on the top adjustment layer. You see that, ah, this is interesting. Let's save, first of all. So here it is, without, with, without, with. You see this does a lot to give us that. There we go. If we look at it now, that's wispier. And it sort of sharpens it up. Let's add two of those. Mm, that's a little too much. All right, so the find edges. Sort of gives us that uh, edge in there, so that this sort of gives us like more defined wispiness there. Cool. So if we wanted to, um, we've got a good layer here. Let's see at the very top. Under the um, find edges, you see that it goes totally black and white. If I bring back more of the original, it gives us some of that blue. I might do this uh, instead over here. I'm going to duplicate the loop and then put the edge on that so I could sort of do both of these. And again, we want to make it look like this is hot 
And so what blend mode do we need to put the actual particle effect in? So we would add again. Yep, yep, we add. So let's come over here to columns, modes, and so let's say add and add. There we go, let's look at one at a time. And if we want to chill it out, the amount of opacity here, we could turn this down. What else do we think it needs here? Here I just have the top one. What do you guys think compared to our reference? Where's the wide shot? Ours is definitely too dense. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Ours is also a little more full eye, if that makes any sense. Sure. OK, it could be a little more circular, well, right? I also mean that you can tell that like in the sides and how flat it is, you can tell that it was made in very specific yeah, this is more of a like a cylinder shape, right? Yeah. Right? So there's two things there. Let's see what we can do about well, let's look at the cylinder shape and then we need to make ours a little more sparse. You may want to go back and do the just um chill out the particles. I feel like when it gets here, this is probably like a pretty good density, but that's maybe a little too dense there couple different things. It's also a little glowier. Let's look at a glow. I'm just going to say stylize glow. And here you can also glow a specific color. And glow intensity. Glow radius. That's better. And glow threshold. That starts to give us some of that blue haze back, right? Just the glow there doing that. What else would help bring this together? What else in the in the actual shot needs to glow? If you look at the reference and ours, what do you guys think? Let's turn this off. Yeah.
We're going to save once. So you guys have yours over top of the actual shot?
I'm liking this. This is slightly different. What do you guys think? It's a little thinner. Let's look at this one once. All right, so if I come back in here, let's go to our particular. What changes did I make here? Turned down my particles per second to about 500, and I made my size a little bit bigger. And then opacity really allows me to dial in the heat. Right, so right about there, maybe. Let's say apply. Cool. So another thing similar to blur, I've got this going on. It's not a loop. It's just you know running particular right now, right? So maybe a simpler route. The blur and crunch, there's another effect similar. I'm going to create a new um, adjustment layer. And this is a fun one. I would write this one down. You need some stuff that looks like weird. Vector blur. Watch, watch, watch vector blur. Nothing by default. And then if I look over here under amount, watch what happens if I dial up the amount. There's some different versions of the algorithm here. Mathematically, I'm really not totally sure exactly what vector blur does, but it's um, you know doing a little bit like what's happening with blur and crunch. You can see that each of these different ooh look at that one. A little bit of a liquify-ish look. Each one sort of has a different look to it. I think the top one is maybe the most. And so here, I'm just sort of playing with some of the values. That's really giving me that foreground background effect. Now we want to keep some of the hot stuff. Let's see what this looks like in our, right? So this is all in my uh, blue energy comp. And so uh, if I turn this back on here, you can see what that's looking like. That's not bad, it just needs to be a little less dense. And so let's come back to the blue energy here. Let's look at some levels. And check in the alpha channel. And so we can see how this allows us to sort of grab more or less. I'm moving the gamma point for the alpha to sort of get more or less of it here. Let's see if we can make it a little bit wispier. So I have natural.
so natural here with the vector blur kind of gives me see how I start to get more of those thin lines I think that's kind of what we want for ours so natural dialing in this angle offset There we go. Now it just looks a little too sharp, right? What would make it, what would soften it up? Yeah. So on top here, I'm going to get Gaussian blur. Dial in a little bit of this. And so that shape that um, Jared was talking about, having it um, curve a little bit. Cylinder. What's that? Cylinder. Cylinder shape, yeah. You can do this a bunch of different ways, but um, we haven't done this yet, I don't think. Let's save once. Um, let me show you an example. I just want this part in the middle. There we go. Up here, this is another powerful tool, Puppet Pin. Puppet Pin Tool. So watch what this does. I select this one, and now I can put some pins in my object. I'll go one, two, three. Nothing by default. Now if I go back to V, the move tool, if I move these pins, I can distort the image, right? So you can use this to sort of bend pixel stuff, pixel assets. I could stretch it out this way. I could stretch it this way. These pins are animatable, right? So I could sort of make it move up and down like this and distort, go this way or this way. There's limits to this, right? You, you can't stretch it too far. You see you start to get a lot of weird distortion, but as far as making like little adjustments to things, you can definitely make a bunch of adjustments here with the puppet pin tool, right? So it's this one right here. So we could do this to distort our effect. Right, I've got the effect happening here. And so if I grab this layer and I go puppet pin tool and I go one, two, three, 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 there we go. Now if I go back to the move tool, I could move this middle part, I missed the top one. It might be acting weird. If it's acting weird and I need to make changes, what's the first thing you do in After Effects? Especially once you start stacking a bunch of effects, the way that they line up together can be, or interact can be difficult. And so what's the, sol what's the way to solve that issue? If you don't know the answer to an After Effects question, your answer is pre-compose pre every time, right? Uh, and so here we're gonna go ahead and say pre-compose Yeah, you can just have layers of pre comps. Yeah. I know that, but it has to do with the way, you know, you're, you're saying like output a bunch of pixels, then do the next step of things, right? Sort of like, you know how you do math and steps? You know, yeah. you know, you could 
do it all in one step, right? But uh, in order to keep track of what's happening, it makes it a little bit easier. So now we'll come in here with Puppet Pin Tool and we'll click, click, click. There we go. It does not want to distort. I'm going to add the glow. Yeah, I don't know. The pin tool is not giving me what we want here. I don't know. This seems like the, the shortest route, though, I think, to it, right? Right. So the three things I would write down here were that we had the, we, we dialed in the particle system. What were the keys to the particle system? We had the add blend mode and larger size. Blue tint. Those would be the things. And then what were the effects I added to really get the afterwards? I used the vector blur to really make that happen. And then the other one here is that there are some, there's some different shapes available uh, for making 2D things into 3D things. And so CC cylinder. Let's try that one. This takes different things and wraps them into a three-dimensional shape. So here, I'll show you once with this one. Here, I'll bring in this picture. And I'll grab something called CC Sphere. So this is you know, sort of like a, some cheap 3D stuff that you can do in After Effects for simple shapes. So I'm going to put the CC, watch this one, CC sphere on this layer. Boom. It takes the image and wraps it onto like a faux three-dimensional sphere. If I were to do this with CC cylinder,
it wraps the image onto a cylinder. And if I now I can rotate that rotation. And so we could try this with our effect. And so I'm going to put CC cylinder on top here, turn that on. We see it rotates and also loses a little bit of energy here. So let's put it back into add blend mode. So without, with. That looks way better. See that? Without, with. Definitely gives us more three-dimensional, more of a three-dimensional look. Now, in general, we're going to hand off, are we going to hand off this whole image to them? No, because they're going to be shooting this set, right? We're just giving them the energy layer as an overlay. And so should we make this too bright or not bright enough? Which, which way should we err on? if we want them to be able to make adjustments later easily. Too bright, right? That way, if they need to, they can just sort of turn it down later versus you know, creating more brightness out of nothing would be, would be tough. I like this a lot. That looks really good. Maybe if there are more edges. I don't know. Let's try that edge. Find edges. Move that up one there. That sort of sharpens that up, but we lose some of the color there. What do you guys think? Better or no? Yes or this? Without? Really because of the color. I like it. And so now we want to hand this off, but just this part, right? Um, and Corey, did you talk about what you, you guys are going to be using Premiere on Saturday, right? Right. Because I know that we're, you were talking about the Vinci a lot. Talk about what? The Vinci. Yeah, yeah. So if we had to hand this off without an alpha channel and you wanted to overlay this onto the footage, 
what uh, blend mode would you use? Like if it ended up having a black background. Screen. Yeah, screen or add, right? Because that would get rid of the black and sort of brighten what's underneath with what we've got here, right? Ours has an alpha channel, but here it is normal. See how that looks less hot, right? Here it is in add. Let's see what screen looks like. Yeah, not the same kind of pop. Lighten. Nope, add definitely looks the best. So it's giving us more pop like that. Cool. Let's look at the chain. So I got to about here, right? With uh, what was the key thing to make the particles look hot here? Add blend mode, right? In the particles. You guys understand what the add, the add is doing the same thing here as it is when we put it over the whole thing, right? Here though, it's like each particle is its own layer, right? And if we make all of them add together, that's much better. And then we did this. So what was this effect? Vector blur. Everyone's got this written down, right? So particles into vector blur. Then we just use some levels to sort of thin it out a little bit. Again, on the alpha channel, this allows me to sort of dial in the thinness of it. So you can sort of shrink it down to just the brightest parts. Then the other stuff was kind of optional. You know, we played with some blur. We played with the fine edges. Here's the glow, with the glow, without the glow. All those adding together. And then what do we do to give it that last bit of circular shape? CC cylinder, right? Right. This is the thing that takes two-dimensional images and sort of does something in 3D with them, either CC cylinder or CC sphere. In this case, we want cylinder. Ten seconds is probably plenty of time, right? Because you're going to be doing a stop motion thing. At the most, you're taking like maybe 20, 30 pictures, you know, playing that back at 12 frames a second. And so this would be plenty of frames to make that happen in this instance. Cool. Let's make a note of all that, right? So, particular is this is the source, and then vector blur. On top of that, we did levels with some alpha channel. And then the CC cylinder to make that work. That seems to be the quickest route.
Cool. So I'll have you guys come up with the, everybody to get your own version of just this, right? So that we can hand off a bunch of them that people can use this weekend. But then on Wednesday, this will still be here. I'll bring my uh, phone gimbal. Is there a good meditating one? Yeah, Maybe we'll do a gimbal shot and track it and then track our stuff in here. That way we can, you know, this won't be for the weekend, but, you know, like a high quality one that we can use in our, in our portfolio. That'll be cool. Sound good? Awesome. I'm going to save this file. Save. All right, I'll put this up later tonight, or probably tomorrow morning. Um, so you need a draft of this for Wednesday before class so that we can use this in our comp, in, in our, you know, our cool gimbal shot, because we'll sell this here. Sound good? Awesome. So we got a short deadline on this one, but I think we can, we can clear our schedules. Awesome. You guys still, is anybody still on the live chat? Let's see. 85% what? On your memory, on the performance and past memory. 86%. Yeah. Well, I'm running the live stream too. Yeah. At the oh, same time. Okay. 